That does it for today's trading action. Again, all three of the major averages closing to the downside. Dow off just about a half of a percentage point. The Nasdaq, the worst performer of the major averages, off just over 1%. The Dow lower for the first time in the last six trading sessions. S&P off nearly 1%. Taking a look at the sector action, like Jared was just mentioning, energy bucking the downward trend that we're seeing play out in the markets, getting a boost here as crude ended the day higher. Communication services, materials, consumer discretionary among the worst performers in today's market action. All right, let's bring in our market panel. We have Matt Kishlansky's Gen Trust Head of Asset Allocation and Cameron Brandt, EPFR Director of Research. Cameron, let's start with you. So we did get a brief bounce here today in the markets after the Fed did release their minutes from the July meeting, although we did uh, quickly give up those gains. What's your big takeaway from the action we saw today? Um, I think we're sort of in a, a stage where, you, for the most part, you should step back when you can from the day-to-day -day action. Uh, I think the bigger picture is that, uh, not necessarily for great reasons, uh, a significant slice of the investing public thinks that the worst may be over. Um, certainly, you know, we look at things through the mutual fund ETF lens. Uh, what we've been seeing is definitely a shift back into the market, driven by the assumption there is going to be a mild recession uh, either at the end of this year or sort of early next year, and that that recession will rapidly change the direction of monetary policy back towards easing. And Matt, to you and your big picture takeaway from the day, did you learn anything from those Fed minutes? Uh, not really. Um, you know, they were pretty consistent, I thought, with sort of the verbal signals we've been getting recently. And Matt, go ahead. Yeah, I agree. I don't think there was a, a, a ton of guidance. And I think investors kind of ended the day where they, where they began the day. I think they feel like they're almost stuck in one of these old cartoon episodes where they have... Uh, a, a white angel on one shoulder and a red devil on the other. And from one perspective, they're being told, uh, relax, everything's fine. Uh, inflation's coming off faster than projected. We think the Fed's going to slow down its hiking cycle. Uh, healthy corporations uh, have had no problem marching through uh, the year of this storm you know, so far uh, in 2022. And if anything, they'll continue a pace through whatever rain may come in the fall. And then I think from the other side, they're being told, whoa, 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 slow down. Um, the terminal rate for Fed front end hikes for the rest of the year is still up to close to 3.7%. And yet the U.S. 10-year Treasury uh, is yielding uh, significantly more than 75 basis points below that. So the market from that corner is telling them expect full complement of hikes, the resulting recession, uh, and then some easing uh, after the fact. So I think investors have to decide which of those, you know, between the stock market and the bond market, which are in essence on either one of their shoulders, uh, which one of those is their guardian angel. Well, Matt, what do you think makes the most, most sense in this environment right now? Well, I think given that uncertainty and the challenge of trying to find a, an entry point into the market, we're, we're less um, convinced that it makes sense to make big bets on, on from an asset allocation perspective to be overweight or underweight. Um, we prefer to make some sectoral bets within equities. Um, we really like biotech. We think it's, it's been significantly oversold um, throughout the beginning of, of this year. And we think the risk return profile for it looks pretty attractive. Uh, we think both clean energy and infrastructure are places where the government's spending priorities have been telegraphed uh, and will create some tailwinds to the rest of the year. Um, but we don't see that priced in um, to, to those sectors particularly. And then overseas, we think that Norway um, will be the, the only, maybe the only winner um, in the kind of energy tug of war going on between Putin and the rest of Europe. And Cameron, given that dynamic of the angel and the devil on our two shoulders in this economy, how are you positioning ahead? Well, um, you know, we don't actually manage any money, so I can simply tell you how people are positioning. Uh, we've definitely seen some uh, step up in movement into uh, sovereign debt. Um, even though yields have not gone up much, they're markedly higher than they have been. Uh, and I think we're sort of seeing uh, a number, you know, a section of the investing public trying to grab income while they can. Um, the, the banker among the uh, sector funds that we track is indeed infrastructure. 
um, in addition to the telegraphed uh, public spending priorities, um, there's going to be uh, a great deal of spending uh, in the technology sector to uh, sort of continue uh, rolling out new products. Um, and uh, of course, uh, the green energy uh, networks need to be built up and uh, we're going to be spending a lot more on military infrastructure. All right, we've got to leave it there, gentlemen. Cameron Brent and Matt Kishlansky, thank you both for being here. Appreciate it very much.